It's Friday night, so it's football night, and you're very welcome to Dave's Diary. Coming up on the show tonight, I'll be joined by former Duckinfield Town Chairman and current committee member Paul Bishop, and the mysterious Mossley Wizard, webmaster extraordinaire and press and programme editor at Mossley FC. We'll be looking back at all the big Tameside sports news stories this week. What's next for Droylsden FC following their relegation on Tuesday night? We'll have all the reaction to the Bloods' demotion. Have the wheels come off for Ashton United? Or can the Robins get their promotion challenge back on track at home to Kings Lynn Town at Hurst Cross tomorrow afternoon? We'll be looking at the amazing stat that shows how different Hyde FC's season could have been if only they'd been able to hold on after taking the lead in matches. And we'll be looking forward to all the other weekend games, including Curzon Ashton's trip to Salford City, Staleybridge Celtic's relegation six-pointer at Worcester City, and Glossop North End's big promotion clash away at Runcorn Town. It's all coming up between now and seven, so keep it tuned to your Tameside Radio, 103.6 FM. And most importantly on the show tonight, we want to hear from you, the listeners. You can text us at 60300, remembering to start your message with the word Tameside, or you can email us at studio at tamesideradio.com, or you can call us on 0845 582 1036. Whatever your take on the local football news, we want to hear your views. So, Bloods fans, where do you stand? Can you bounce back? Robins fans, can you still make the playoffs? And what's gone wrong with one point in 12? Nash fans, is this finally going to be the year for Curzon? And Celtic fans, are you going to beat the drop? Text us, email us, or call us. I want to hear your views. And I'd also like to thank all of you that have contacted the station over the past week. We value your comments, even if they're critical. And you'll notice that we've made some changes to the makeup of the show today based on some of those suggestions. One thing that's very clear is that people are passionate about their non-league football and passionate about this show. And I can assure you all that I'll be doing everything in my power to take this show forward with some exciting news to be announced next week. So grab yourself a beer or a coffee and sit down for an hour of Tameside Sports Chat because I'm Dave Edler and this is my guy. Well, I'm delighted to say that I've been joined for my first interview today by Paul Bishop. Paul is the former chairman of Duckinfield Town. Duckinfield, of course, play at Step 7, which is in the FBT Manchester League Premier Division, and they're currently in a mid-table berth. Paul, you're very welcome to uh, Dave's Diary. Hi, Dave. Pleased to meet you, sir. Right, well, let's have a, a little chat about your previous involvement with the club. I gather that you've held various positions, chairman, secretary, currently at the committee, uh, on mm -hmm. the committee and running the, the bar. Um, yeah, that's most the, important, isn't it? At most important, <laughs> a, a fundraiser, of course, for, for local football. Yeah. Um, do you want to give us a little potted history about your involvement at Duckinfield Town? Uh, I've been involved on the committee as such since the early 90s uh, when the manager of my Sunday team, Mitchell Celtic, a lad called Keith Stafford, he took over Ducky Town on Saturday uh -huh. and as I was secretary with Jill, he said, do you want to come involved? Like? So I said, it was a bit, bit steep for me. Like. So I ended up going there, watched a couple of games. Next thing you know, I'm collecting the subs for the first team and next thing you know, I'm on committee. Next thing you know, I'm secretary. So I did secretary for a few years, uh, and then the bloke who was chairman, Barry Sidebottom, who was a successful businessman, found it too much for him, so I ended up being chairman for a couple of years. Yeah. Uh, then we joined up with Duckingfield Youth for about three or four, maybe five years ago now, which was uh, a fantastic relationship with game, game with them, because it's, it's brought us a lot more people involved with the club. It's got us really going, and um, we're, we're very successful at the moment off the field. So obviously I'm very familiar with your team in the uh, in the Manchester Premier League, but how yeah. many other uh, teams have you got involved with the club at the moment? Well, on Saturday in the Manchester League we've got three sides, one in the Premier Division, one in the Third Division, one in the Fourth. Mm -hmm. And then over the whole weekend, starting from the, uh, the Duckingfield Youth section, we've got, I think it's either 19 or 20 other sides of various age groups, and they're feeding through to our first team, well, the, the male side, obviously we have a couple of female side, but the male side are feeding through to the first team now and uh, they have done this in the last three or four years and it's been very successful both financially and playing wise. And you, you've got your clubhouse as well obviously which mm. is a, a sort of hub of the of the village community there. Oh very much so, it, up to two years ago it was just like a, a backstreet tap room but we've last, since last January we've done it all up, we've got all 
we've got a pool table in, we've extended it, we've not wanted to change rooms through, we've extended it into a, a big social club now and it's packed every weekend. Not just people watching the match, but actually watching football on telly as well, because we've got all the Sky Sports on as well, like, you know. Yeah. So Saturday and Sunday, any, any time you can get loads of people in watching our club now. And what have been, during your period at the club, what have, what have been the highlights? Has there been any particular achievements that Ducky's had while you're on your watch? Uh, well, we've had, we've had a couple of good runs in the Cheshire Cup. We got to the semi-finals a few years ago, mm -hmm. and we're playing against sides who are very, very top-level sides, you know, your, your Barrington's and your, your Middlewich's. In fact, I think probably the best game we had was beating Middlewich 5-1 in one of the earlier rounds, because they, they were quite a well-established club in the Cheshire League and one of the favourites to win the Cup, and we ended up there. And we won 5 1, but fortunately, that, that was in the 1999. We had a cracking season that year. We finished runners up in the Premier League to stand, who the year after went into the non league, and they were paying players £50, £60 pound a game. Right. And we lost our best players that year because they were that good. They, they ended up yeah. playing semi pro football, like, you know, but we had a, that was our best side we ever had that one. I think just for the for the benefit of any viewers that might uh, listeners that I should say that might not be familiar with the setup at Step Seven, um, we we call it Step Seven because it's seven divisions effectively below the Football League. Now that means that the clubs that are in Duckingfield Towns League, if they were to win that league, technically they'd be eligible for uh, promotion to the North West Counties League First Division. Uh, but the reality, certainly in recent years, Paul, is that mm -hmm. the facilities aren't really there for clubs to step up, are they? The uh, the goalposts seem to change every two or three years. Like there's yeah. teams that's finished 25 points behind us in the Manchester League who end up being in the, the North West County League because they've got grounds that are facility-wise good enough. Yeah. But they always say you have to finish in top two and three to have a chance, but sometimes it's not been the case. But we've, we've not, since the new formation of the club, We've not finished high enough to put our name forward to be eligible to, to get on the promotion level, and we have to give them like 12 months' notice. Say we're going to do this, we're going to do that, and we're not going to. Well, the goalposts keep changing. So before we make his mind on when we're going to do it, we need to know that the, the grounds aren't going to change. You know, that's so what we're it, wary of. So, is the club still ambitious to get into oh, the North yeah. West Counties League? Yes, yeah. yes. We spend a lot of money on our current ground, our main ground, because when you come watching, that's our like backup ground. Right? That's, that's where right, they want yeah. to. Because we had it done about two years ago in the centre spot, it was under, un, underlaying too much, so we thought we'd level it out and make the playing pitch one of the best around, because it was very good before that. But it, it didn't work, it's, it's gone um, wrong, so we have to do it, we're going to do it all again this summer. Uh, we've we've, we've uh, concreted all the dugouts in, all the, all the fencing's there, all we need to do is get the change rooms moved over to there and, and get a 50-seater standing, which we've got ability to do that, but we will have to get some loans to do it, though, I think, through various sources, but we have got the, the, the wherewithal to do it now. And what about floodlights? Floodlights, you don't need them early on apparently, you only need them when you want the one, one, one more division. Uh, but we have in the past, when Bowie was chairing, we have priced up floodlights and they're quite, you know, like where you can get them cheap, it costs you something like 15,000 to transport them, that's, that's the biggest cost of them, like. it's not the, the actual price after that when you put them on, we'll have to budget for that. But uh, that, that's uh, certainly it, long, longer term, that one. That's it, yeah. I, I think that the North West Counties League have actually introduced it as a as a necessity for the first season now. Right, so well, think, that's, that's yeah, something that's changed think, since last yeah, time. Yeah, I think you'll that, find right. that you will need lights to actually, right, to actually well, okay. get in. Well, yeah. it, it won't be unsurmountable, but yeah. that's sort of second on our list. Do, that, you, yeah. do you foresee any sort of planning permission issues with, with lights in, in the area in that you're in, in Ducky? It shouldn't really, because the, the rugby clubs have toddlers lights on their sort of like ground for a good 10, 15 years and no one's yeah. ever complained so it'd be wrong if someone starts complaining now we put them on the other side of block shades because it's a massive big playing field isn't it yeah you know, so all right well um we'll, we'll talk some more about ducky in just a while but i know you've been out and about at, at games this week and we'll have uh, a mossley wizard joining us uh, a little bit later in the show so oh, right, right. i wanted to ask you about a game that i know you went to this wednesday which was the mm -hmm. manchester premier cup semi-final between Mossley and Trafford. Yeah. Uh, Mossley of course have won the title for the last two seasons but they surrendered their grip on the trophy on Wednesday night going mm -hmm. down 3-0. Was it as uh, comfortable as the scoreline suggests for Trafford? It wasn't a 3-0 game, no. There, right. there wasn't much between the sides. The best side probably won because they, they had that bit of extra edge. Um, I couldn't ever see Trafford losing, I must admit. But as soon as they went in front no, I think that was the end of the game. Really. I can't see Mosley coming back after that. Yeah. The, the gap between the two divisions was a bit. At the end, the longer the game went on, even though they had one centre off Trafford, it was a bit evident they were in a higher division than Mosley. Yeah. I mean, or, or they they were the the side obviously that denied Mosley last season after Mosley were looking one of the mm. favourites for promotion out of the 
Evo Stick First Division North for a period, yeah. uh, but during the summer, as often happens in these cases, they lost their management team and, and they've had to rebuild. Obviously, we'll get the, the inside view later in the show, <laughs> but uh, how do you see things at, at Mosley at the moment? What, what did you think of the, the setup there and the, the, the side? Do you think that they've got something to build on and that Peter Band can take the club mm. forward? Well, I watched them in the last round, actually, when they beat ABA 2-1, because my friend's son was playing for Mosley at the time, so yeah. I, so I went watching that. And uh, at that particular time, I thought there was nothing between them and Abbey A, and I think Abbey, Abbey A were below them in, in, in standard wise. Uh, so I think they're probably in the right level, Mosley. Chaffee were better than them. There weren't much between them and Abbey A, and they're probably in the right level. I can't see them rip up any trees with that side they've got there, I must admit. Right. There, there certainly is an influx of better players if they want to get promoted. Okay. Well, I presume once again it's down to money, I presume, isn't it? Yeah, well, exactly. Um, I mean, this week there's there's no doubt at all about the main news story. It's Droylsden uh, getting mm. relegated in February. Uh, yeah, probably, yeah. I'm guessing, I, I must admit, I haven't researched it thoroughly across the whole country, but I'm guessing that they're the first side in senior football to be relegated, yeah. going down in February with only three points. Mm -hmm. um, if any clubs do go down as early as this, it's normally because they're in administration and that they've had mm -hmm. a, a big points deduction, like 10 or 15 taken off at the start of the season. Uh, unfortunately, the Bloods don't even have that excuse. Uh, how do you see, obviously there's lots of speculation as to exactly what's gone wrong at the Butcher's Arms, but looking at it from your point of view as someone who's followed the local non-league mm -hmm. scene for a number of years, what's your take on what's happened down there? Without actually going into administration, they have gone into administration really because he's, the money you should spend loads of money on players, he hasn't got that money now because he's had to pay that back to my company who I work for, HMRC. Right, so okay. <laughs> Didn't realise you were the tax man. I'll have to be <laughs> careful what I say, won't I? Yeah. I'm off duty. I finish at one o'clock today. Right. Yeah. Um, so you, do you think it's it, it's purely that, that, it, that it's just that their finances have caught up with them and oh, that yeah, there, yeah, was, yeah. there was nowhere for them to go? Yeah, he was paying silly money, money out when, they won, when they got through to the conference. He was paying, so I believe, anyway, I never actually saw any wage packets, but he mm. was paying silly money out for people from, from the other side of Merseyside coming over and they won, you know, silly, silly money. And this year he obviously hasn't got any money to pay anyone out, so you're not going to attract players because they're all mercenary end of the day footballers at semi-pro level, aren't they? So and he's had to rely on contacts I think and experimenting with trialists etc and, and the level they're playing at they, they just got hammered every week haven't they really. I think one of the other additional problems they had was that until I think just after Christmas they had a, a transfer embargo um, yeah. imposed on them by the league as well which meant that they were very limited in the people that they could bring in yeah, because yeah, yeah. literally it was only people that weren't assigned to any other club currently mm -hmm. um, and obviously there aren't many people that are, that are level, in that yeah. category yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so because of that it made it equally you know even harder for him mm -hmm. um, to their credit I think results have been improving for them in recent weeks they came within a whisker yeah, of have, winning yeah. at, uh, at Barwell a couple of weeks ago um, I think it was the fourth minute of injury time that, that Barwell equalised. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's all part of the thing that when you're down, you're really down, aren't you? And, and getting back into that winning mentality, Habit, yeah, it's yeah. very difficult to get across the finishing line, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I'd have had the same problem, haven't they? Yeah. 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 In a higher division, obviously, but yeah, same mentality, isn't it? You've got to win, haven't you? That's right. Mm -hmm. I mean, Hyde at least have managed the one victory so far this season. So yeah. uh, someone at home, love they? <laughs> they haven't won at home. No, of their um, of their nine points, uh, six have been away from home. Mm -hmm. And I've got an interesting stat coming up on that. So so let's actually have a look at at Hyde as we as we start to preview uh, this weekend's games. Um, Hyde travelled to face Braintree Town down in Essex, uh, mm -hmm. Cressing Road. Braintree are in sixteenth place. Uh, they've played 27 matches, which is actually much less than most of the other sides in the school Premier. And they've got 42 points. I think that Cressing Road has been one of the grounds mm. particularly affected by the bad weather down south recently. Hyde, of course, are bottom of the table with nine points. Um, and they've played 34 games. But I've got an interesting stat for you, Paul. I don't know what you'll make of this. But Hyde have had a habit of losing leads in matches this season in the league. If Hyde had actually won all the Skrill Premier games that they'd taken the lead in this season, they'd now have 40 points and they'd, mm -hmm. been, they'd be in 17th place in the league table. Oh, wow. That's why there's a lot of stray dogs in, in Hyde then, because all the leads have gone. Oh, that's right, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But 
when I see a stat like that, I mean the club, obviously their policy has been to back Scott McNiven, um, yeah. bo both yeah. coming from the board and to a degree, uh, I think there's been some opposition, but, but broadly speaking, I think the fans have been on board. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's great, you know. They they, they see that that the club is trying with limited resources to, to, to do what they can. But having said that, when you look at a stat like that and see that they were actually ahead in that many games and and that they've dropped thirty one points from mm -hmm. a leading position, do you not have to look then at the management and coaching of the side and say, well, in a situation like that? Isn't this really a coaching issue? Isn't it something to do with the manager? Could be a fitness level. Yeah. Issue, comes in. yeah. And and do they have to take a, d a degree of b blame for for throwing all those points away? Uh, as a bloke from Stirling Bridge, I'm not bothered at either losing lost them. <laughs> but, but as an outside looking in, yeah. they were they were playing against full time professionals who train all the time. They're a lot fitter. I yeah. do only part time, so that's good. it's going to make a difference. So that, that's probably half of the reasons why the letting go. So, so, so your take on it really is that towards the end of games, which which is true, it has been the case that they've surrendered a lot of winning positions late on in games. Mm -hmm. That it's purely a case of of the fitness starting to tell, and that's why the other teams come through. I think quite a lot of it would be real realistically. Yeah. All right. Well, there is one chance for for Hyde to salvage their season when they try and go one better than uh, the Mosley did and reach the Manchester Premier Cup final. Um, mm -hmm. On Wednesday night they're travelling for, for what's relatively a, a local derby away to New Mills of the um, Evo mm -hmm. Stick of course uh, First Division North. Um, even despite the wretched season that, that Hyde have been having would you mm -hmm. expect them to get through that one and get into the Cup final? Looking where New Mills are on the league table, I would have thought whatever side I turn out should be good enough to beat New Mills on the day, on the okay. night even. Yeah. All right, and would you, if they manage to do that, then based on what you've seen on Wednesday night, would you fancy Trafford to give them a decent game in the final? Well, I'm guessing I'd put the first team out in the final, so I think I'd still beat Trafford. Yeah. Right, yeah. so there, there is a chance for a bit of a silver lining at the yeah, end of the yeah, season. Yeah, I'd have thought so, yeah. Have they, have they, have they, well, subject to when the final is and when, what league games they've got left to play, because I presume they're going to be already relegated by the time. So Absolutely. Well, you mm. heard it first here on on Same Side Radio, Hyde are going to win a trophy this season, so uh, if it doesn't happen, don't blame <laughs> me. Address all your letters to Duckinfield Town FC, marked to the attention of, of Mr Paul Bishop. Um, it's time for us to have a quick look at, at some of the other fixtures before uh, before the break. We've got Worcester City, obviously against Staley Bridge Celtic, which I know is a is a team that you've got some interest in. Mm -hmm. In that game, uh, we've got Lewis Hatch, Callum Warburton, and Christian Platt all out through injury, and Sean McConville uh, misses the match through suspension after being sent mm -hmm. off mm -hmm. against Stockport County. Just to give you the relative positions, it's very tight down the bottom there, uh, with the exception of Workington, who, to be honest, do look as if they're they're already gone. Workington played 26 and 15 points. Second from bottom we've got Gloucester uh, played 27 on 22 points. Then Oxford City in the final relegation position at the moment played 26 points 24. Then we've got both Celtic and Histon on played 29 and 28 points. And then one ahead of them is Worcester City who have played 30 and 32 points. So if Celtic were to manage to win at Worcester tomorrow, then they would move to within a point of Worcester with Keith Briggs' men having a, a game in hand. But they have already mm -hmm. lost at home to Worcester at mm -hmm. Bowerfold earlier this season. So yeah. what's your take on that one? Do you think it's uh, it's mm -hmm. the time that, that Staley Bridge's uh, poor run can, can end and they can come back home with the three points? Well, I believe they played all right last week when they drew one all. That with was Brackley. with Brackley Town, yeah. Yeah, Brackley was not a normally a decent side up there. And mm -hmm. the, the result, apparently, they brought a couple of lads in from Preston and they put a bit of life into the team. So they were lo lucky not to win, apparently, although, even though it was a late on goal. Um, when I, last time I watched Bridge Celtic, just before Christmas, they played Boston and they drew 3 all. Oh, they should have won about 5-1. Right. And my taking it was the defence was poor. Mm -hmm. uh, they all, and, and they had, every time they had different keepers in all the time, they've not got us settled back four or back five, whichever you want to call it. And so they're always edging when they give free kicks away and corners. They're always looking like the other team are going to score. Going forward, they look pretty well. But I've said that since then. The lad who was up on loan who used to play for me, he's gone back to Geisley, so I don't know who's playing up front now for them. But they look, they've got individual football wise, they're pretty good. But they're missing the spine, the, the strong lads right through the centre. So that, I mean, years ago, Alan Anson said he would out with kids. 
and everyone laughed at him because United won the league that year. Exactly. But what yeah. he didn't realise was, what he didn't say was, he had Smikel in there, so draw a kid in centre midfield and can counter him up front. So if you've got three players like that in any side, we'd be a better side. And that's what Celtic need. They need three older heads in their team. Well, of course, Staley Bridge have effectively been running as an under-21 outfit for yeah, the last yeah. few seasons when they took the decision to go full-time. Mm -hmm. um, there's been mixed views on that, I think it's fair to say, amongst Celtic fans, and there still is to yeah. this day. Yeah. Um, the chairman and, we understand, the manager, though, are, are both very supportive of the policy. Um, what's your take on it? Do you think it's the right way for them to go, or do you think they'd be better switching to a, a traditional part-time setup? Uh, well, I was on Thames Side Radio about three years ago, whenever it was, when it first came out, come, when the, the idea came in, and I was asked then, my opinion then, and I said, well, the jury's out, and I, I think the jury's definitely I've made a decision now, and it's not going to work. Okay. They definitely need order heads in there. Well, uh, just, just finally, before uh, before we go to the break and, and, and move on to our second guest, uh, just wanted to ask you about your own game away to Old Alts tomorrow in Old the Alts, FBT. Yeah. 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 Uh, what are you expecting from that game? I'm expecting a victory. Um, we've got three lads who play for those who we score goals every week. But bang them in left, right, and centre. We've got Tyler Devlin, and he, he scores lo loads of goals from every position. We've got like old Danny Parkinson, who's, who's a young lad who scores lots of goals, and we've got old Damo Wheel, who scores lots of goals. And I think that's the only game of the season where we haven't scored all season. We lost 1 0, and we right. battered them. We've just come with a back in net. So tomorrow, all things being equal, we should, sh we should beat them. But they are, they are a bit of a bogey side for us, I must admit, old adults. When we won the first division a few years ago, we won every game apart from two, and both, get, both games were against them, and since then. my second guest of the day I'm des delighted to report that I've been joined by Mossley Wizard the mysterious Mossley Wizard from Mossley Football Club of course uh, you're very welcome Wizard to the show tonight that's one thanks Dave um, Mossley Wizard has been a supporter of the club for for years and years he's the club's historian he's also their press officer he writes the program and also is the webmaster of Mossley Web uh, don't you make the tea as well? No, I do the match day announcing as well, though. The DJing. Okay. Yeah. So how do you fit in time for anything else with all that going on in your life? With, with great difficulty. But so, I, I get there in the end always. So, Wizard, how long have you actually supported Mosley FC for? Uh, since I was a little boy. Um, started when I was about nine. Um, went origin initially with a, an old chap who lived across the street from me who asked if I wanted to go to a game, and my dad said yes, so off I went. I'd watched Latics and uh, Oldham Athletic, that is, yeah. and I've been to Manchester City before then. Uh, I went to Mosley uh, with Mr. Richards, and, and uh, well, I've been going ever since. That was 1968, so it's, uh, it's a long time now. And I've been involved pretty much full on with the club in some capacity or another, uh, apart from a, a two year break when I lived abroad since, 1960, since 1973. Uh, 73, 74, when I went on the committee for the first time. Well, I, I, I'm guessing that there's probably only going to be one answer to this, but what's your highlight whilst you've been watching Mosley FC? Does it involve a certain stadium in London at all? It involves getting to it, I think. I think the semi-final second leg at Boston was probably it, really. Mm -hmm. Although, you know, the, the day at Wembley was amazing and flew by faster than any day I've ever lived. Um, I think the, 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 the feeling of glory of knowing you were going to Wembley. I think that was probably the one and only time I've actually cried at the end of a football match, oh. but uh, I, I seriously did that day when we won at Boston. And, and remind 
listeners who perhaps are too young to remember that period, what it, what it was actually like, how many people actually went well, down from the, Mosley, how many coaches you had, the what the atmosphere was like in that, the town? Well, there's a, there's a, um, a, a TV show that ITV made that's on, on YouTube, you can find it, uh, Mosley Goes to Wembley, yeah. and it basically covers the, the, the weekend, both the, you know, the team going down, playing the match, coming back, and the, and the, the celebrations, in, in like we'd won the cup, to be honest, the following day in the marketplace. It said we took 10,000 people to Wembley um, and emptied the town and the, uh, allegedly there were more burglaries in Mosley on that day Mosley went to Wembley than, <laughs> than in the rest of the year put together which imagine. is quite possible. There was a heck of a lot of people went um, and it was a wonderful occasion. Unfortunately after being unbeaten in 35 games leading up to Wembley we actually went and lost the final which yeah. nobody could quite believe and is probably the reason why the town celebrated the day after. It was it wasn't about you know. Plus, we actually thought we were going to do it again the year later, but yeah. we're lost in the quarter final at Bangor. But uh, uh, happy days. So that that's the obvious one. And, and what are what are the other highlights? What stands out for you, or is there a game that perhaps might be less celebrated, but it was just a particularly emotional game or uh, a particular tie that that lives on in your mind? I think possibly when I when we first big game when I was when I was young yeah. was an FA Cup tie at Stockport County. I was a Stockport were in the old third division then yeah. and, and considered a, obviously a big club. We were in the Cheshire League and considered n to have no chance. Now the, the, the chairman of Stockport at the time was a guy called uh, Dragon Lukic and I think he's, he's, he'll have been dead a long long time now but uh, he made a statement in the programme at uh, Stockport that day th that if Stockport didn't win this particular game against Mosley um, what was it? Uh, I'm trying to remember what he actually said now. It's a long time <laughs> since yeah. I've read it. Uh, but uh, oh, yeah, the, there is something seriously wrong with Stockport County, its management and team. Mm -hmm. so, uh, or words to that effect. Uh, and of course, a chap called, a big centre half we had at the time called Mike Batty uh, scored an equaliser for us. And, and we drew there to yeah. make uh, Mr. Lukic probably not a very happy man. Although, uh, uh, then uh, the following Tuesday afternoon, of course, we didn't have floodlights at the time, so I'd wagged off school, um, which was difficult because a lot of the kids had lab wagged off, but they were all at Mosley Ollins and, and that, and I, I was at the Bluecoat School in Oldham, so I was one of like only two boys who wagged off that day, and we yeah. did get in a lot of trouble the following day to go and watch a replay, which unfortunately we lost 1-0 on a very really wet and foggy day. So obviously they were they were very heady days. What? What's your take on the problems that non-league football, especially at, at, at your level, I would say, are, are currently having in, in, in regard to attendances? Because if we look at football generally, obviously there was the massive slump in the 80s with hooliganism yeah. and, and everything else that was going on through that period. And then we had the rebuilding after, obviously, events like, like Heisel, Bradford and, mm. and Hillsborough. Uh, and the game then w was reborn effectively after the uh, after the Gaza World Cup and uh, and everything and, and and Sky Sports whatever you might think of them have certainly transformed the game and and crowds have come back at Premier level uh, and the Skrill Premier is getting attendances far in excess of whatever was there before mm. at the top of the non-league game but mm. below that support has really collapsed uh, at clubs like Mosley. Well, yes and no. I mean. I think there's a lot of uh, a lot of factors involved in it. I mean, uh, certainly the fact that there's football on TV 24/7. You only need to tune in your internet. You can pretty much watch any game in the world at any time, day or night. Yeah. Of course, back in the day when Mosley were at the top of the tree uh, in non-league football, you know, <laughs> you got match of the day and maybe a, a, a bit of highlights on a Wednesday night on, yeah. on uh, with Harry Carpenter the, 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 or the, the David Coleman or something. Moore, wasn't Brian there? Moore, yeah. 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 You know, uh, 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 the difference now, of course, is is that, uh, and I think there's so many other distractions. You know, the kids now are not necessarily drawn straight into football because there's so many other things going on, mm. uh, thanks to your social media, internet, uh, you know, uh, uh, the TV. That is very, very difficult to compete. Plus, uh, there's another aspect to this. You're saying about the attendances at, at the conference national level be, being. Uh, quite high, uh, you know, 
when the, when we were in the old Northern Premier League, and that was the highest league in the north of England, it, right, was, yeah. it was equal to what is now the Conference right, National yeah, in standard. Prom into the, 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 the gates across team. that league weren't dissimilar to the current conference yeah. attendances. You've got to remember, we're now four levels below that. Yeah. So if you took four levels below the old Northern Premier League, then you you'd be way down in park football. Like yeah. Well, you would have. Uh, well, you wouldn't have seen attendances like that. Yeah. You'd have seen much smaller attendances. Mm. So the, the the fact that the game has, itself has expanded in such a way, uh, if you look across the board, the, the gates are probably uh, probably higher at the lower levels than they've ever been. I mean, uh, 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 it's just that we didn't expect to be leagues pushed in mm. in the spaces between leagues. So we went from being, you know, the next level outside the football league, uh, and then the next year we were two levels. We, we, we won the league and got relegated in effect in 1979 when they started the, the uh, when they started the conference. Yeah, as the Lions Premier League as it was then. I, uh, I think w one of the things that you, you know you've highlighted is the distractions that, that that come with youth now that perhaps yes. weren't there before and it's very easy for people to fall out of the habit of going um, my observations over the last couple of seasons is that Mosley were accumulating a little mini sort of balmy army that was uh, congregating behind the, the the goal at matches and there was quite a few of them mm. and, and they seem to have vanished this season is that sort of I think symptomatic of, well, of people of course just drifting off they've all left school now they were all pretty much schoolmates yeah. from Mosley all -ins who gathered together and decided they were going to watch Mosley, yeah, uh, you know, home games, away games. Um, but of course now they've all left and gone their own separate ways to different colleges and work and so on. Um, it's That sort of has drifted away. Oh, there's quite a few of them still come, but yeah. not in the big group that they used to. So they're more scattered amongst the crowd now, like, and standing maybe standing with their dads now yeah. rather than, you know, with the mates. So... Um, but you know, th th what I've seen over the years is that people who watched watched non-league football or watched Mosley as youngsters at some point will go back to it. They'll get fed up with whatever else it is they're doing yeah. on a Saturday afternoon, and, and at some point go back to it because it's always there, and they can always say they support Mosley because mm. they supported Mosley as as youngsters. You know, and I think a lot do that. Of course, last season it was a case of what might have been for the club, and this was, if you like, the. The, the time in the modern era when it looked like maybe you were going to get back on, on track again and, and it was a very successful season in many ways but, but ultimately ending up with nothing after losing in the playoffs and then uh, again as often happens at many clubs you then had managerial changes in the, in the summer players leaving and, and, and the wheels coming back off what, what's your mm. take on the, the highs and lows over the past sort of 12 to 18 months? Well uh, last season was obviously you know, a, a really good season. We won the Manchester Cup for the second year on the trot. Uh, we got to the, uh, on the last day of the season, in fact, in very dramatic circumstances, we got through to the playoffs when we thought it was out of our reach. Um, and the excitement of getting into the playoffs possibly even cost us in the playoff semi-final because I think everybody was still buzzing off the fact that we got into them. Uh, and then. Sadly, we lost to a last-minute, quite controversial goal at Camel Laird in the yeah. in, in the uh, in the semi-final when at a time when we were actually on top in the game. Um, it was disappointing. Obviously, the manager left for Pasties New in the it, it very close to the start of pre-season friendlies, um, and um, the club backed him very quickly in appointing Peter Band as manager, and he brought Lloyd Morrison in as as, as joint manager, and they've basically had to rebuild a new team. Um, and you know, so far so good. They've actually done okay at it. But it's a long, you know, it's a, it doesn't happen overnight with a completely new squad. So to get the right balance, get the right players, mm. we had a, a couple of good spells this season. Where you know, and we've we've had we had a spell of bad results when we weren't even playing badly, which was very disappointing. You know, results just going against us. Um, and it's been a bit of a topsy turvy season. But I think really, uh, realistically, you know, we're looking at next season as yeah. to maybe having a go at, at getting in at least the playoffs you know having having given the management a season to get yeah. to get a, a squad together and obviously a f their first full pre-season for next season uh, and I'm, I'm sure we'll be okay
Well, I, I deliberately won't ask you what you think of your, your current management uh, uh, set up because obviously as, as an official of the club that, that, would be, uh, that would be unfair. But what I would like to well, ask... Well, I'm biased in their favour at the moment. Yeah. I actually, you know, they're both really good blokes and, and I get on with them very well and I hope that, you know, will continue for a long time. Well, well that's good. But, but, but I was going to... The question I was going to ask was who stands out for you as, as the great manager of Mosley during all these years that you've been around? If I had to put you on the spot but and say, who, who was the manager that I'd that be you an idiot if I didn't say Bob Murphy. It was the right. guy who, you know, we won the league twice, got to Wembley. We, yeah. we were runners up in the league the next three seasons after that. Basically for five years, we, we ruled mm -hmm. the roost. And he was the manager at the time, so it would have to be Bob Murphy. He's, he's something of a legend. The people behind the scenes at that time were a big influence on, on, on my involvement in Mosley, which were uh, Jim Warmby, who was the club secretary at that time, and Ian Moorcroft, who was the chairman. Yeah. Um, you know, they were all very influential characters in that, that era of Mosley FC. Uh, but Bob Murphy, uh, he, he was, you know, he, he was the most successful manager, so he'd have to be the, the top dog. Okay. Well, uh, coming back to the, this weekend's action, you're, you're away at, uh, at Lancaster City. Obviously, yeah. you've had a disappointment in midweek that you weren't able to complete the treble of wins in the Manchester Premier Cup. Mm. You went out to Trafford on, on Wednesday night. Yeah. Um, how do you see the, the club being in shape for Saturday? Do you think there'll be any sort of reaction from that defeat or will you go to the giant axe in, in good heart? Well, I think we'll go out to the giant axe in good heart. Um, the lads will always give it the best shot, whatever the uh, opponent is. Lancaster obviously a good side. We've beaten them twice this season as it happens already in the league and mm -hmm. FA Trophy within the space of a few days earlier That's on. That's right, yeah, I remember so that. They'll, yeah. they'll be looking to, to bounce back from that, plus the fact they won at Darlington on, on, on in midweek, which is no mean feat in itself. So we, we know we've got our, our hands full with a very difficult opponent tomorrow, but I'm looking forward to the game. It, it, there's no reason why we can't do very well up there. We were we were uh, lacking our, our centre forward on Wednesday night, who, who will be who was cup tied, and he'll be available tomorrow. And I'm I'm told that you know we've got a reasonably uh, close to full strength squad to choose from. Okay. Uh, tomorrow, so uh, well, best be best of luck with that. Yeah. Um, obviously, the, there's only one main news story on on Tameside this week, and and that's the relegation of Joylesden in mm. in February. Um, a sad situation, whichever way you look at it. Putting traditional rivalries away. I know that uh, aside, I know there are certain clubs that 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 don't particularly have much time for, for Droylsden and, and, and for Pacey, but but what's your take on, on what's happened for looking at where they were a few seasons ago? How do you see it? I just think it's a great shame, really. I feel sorry for the supporters that, yeah. that, that they, they've gone through that. I know that their gates have really dwindled, so I'm told. Uh, we, we played them earlier on in the season in the first round of the Manchester Cup and won, won comfortably, and, and they did look a poor side, to be yeah. fair. And they, they've changed so many players over the course of the season. They even signed a few... You know what I would suggest a, a, a decent place. I mean, at the moment they got Sam Madeley playing up front for them, which I, I don't quite understand how that's happened. But um, uh, however, they've been relegated. I suppose, I, I suppose Pacey will, will look at you know trying to bounce back next season when you know they'll be in our division. So uh, you know we can renew a local rivalry uh, so there in the league. It's a it's a good few years since we've actually played draws in in a league game. Yeah. Um, so I'll look forward to that one and uh, you know it'll be the first time I've been to the Butcher's Arms for a long long time as well so well just just keeping in your division for a moment before we we have a quick look at the Evo stick premier Kurz and Ashton are they going to be in your division uh, next season well, that's a good question they're in the box I, seat I, at the I, moment away to Salford I, City tomorrow I'll, I'll own up and say that I, I actually never fancied them and, and they, they, yeah they, they keep doing it and uh, you know Flanny's got a bit of magic about him somehow yeah. and uh, I've, I've seen them uh, obviously when they played against us and I've seen them one other time as well this season and, and, and to be honest I wasn't greatly impressed on any occasion but they keep getting results and that win at, at Warrington last week was phenomenal because Warrington are proper uh, up and under merchants you Absolutely, know they basically yeah. bombard you so you know to withstand that and then go and win 5-1 I think that's a tremendous result and, and if they go up they go up good luck to them 
Well, let's just bring the uh, the listeners up to date with the situation at Curzon. Obviously, uh, travelling to Salford tomorrow, then away to Bursco on Tuesday night. Warrington still top of the table, played 30 and 68 points. Curzon just a point behind 67, played 27. And then we've got Farsley, 31, that's four games more than Curzon with 65 points. Darlington, who lost in midweek, played 29, 61 points. And then Bamber Bridge played 29 and 57. Um, moving into the Premier Division, Droylsden already relegated, as we said, playing FC United of Manchester away at Gig Lane tomorrow. I guess it's going to be just trying to salvage some pride in front of a big crowd there for them, isn't well, it? Well, that's what they'll, they'll be able to uh, have a chance of doing, isn't it? You know, and I'm sure nobody fancies them to get a result, but I'm sure Pacey actually quietly might actually think, oh, I, you never know, we might just pull one off because obviously the, 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 pressure's, the, off, the pressure's off now and I've yeah. seen this so many times before when a team's been relegated already yeah. and then all of a sudden they play like they've just won the league yeah. because they're, they're free, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter if they lose 10-0 or win 1-0 you know, tomorrow, does it really? Well, well, FC United were caught cold in a similar situation when they lost to Durham City a couple of seasons of course back. They did, yeah. Uh, yeah. Durham, I think, had had 28 straight defeats going into yes, that game I remember that. and they did derailed FC so yeah. I should think that uh, <laughs> that Margison will be a, a bit wary I'm of that I'm sure he'll be aware of that yeah, yeah. Um, and in the Premier Division Ashton United um, obviously there's there's history should we say between Mosley and Ashton uh, after, yeah. after what happened but uh, they were going great guns and then they've only won uh, or, or taken one point from their last 12 they're at home to Kings Lynn tomorrow can you see them creeping into the playoffs, or has the chance gone now? I don't. I don't know if the chance has gone. I think you know teams are, are uh, teams can beat each other. As a simple fact, uh, you know Ashton are capable of beating Kings Lynn as, mm -hmm. as Kings Lynn are capable of beating Ashton, and the you know Kings Lynn are up there as well, aren't they? They're 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 you know they're about to run the the playoff. Um, I think it's a tough tough division up at the top end of it. I think Ashton have done very well. Uh, to be where they are, you know, it's predominantly uh, uh, an ex Mosley team. Yeah. Um, so it, you know, it maybe how, it maybe gives. Make you feel? Well, well, you know, I, I was upset at the time. Yeah. I'll own up to that. Uh, I was disappointed in in certain individuals and upset at the time. But we move on. You know, uh, it's, it's history now, and and good luck to them. I mean, we can say the same about Curzon. They've got a number of. Uh, ex Mosley players from from uh, an era previous yep. to to Steve Halford's time at Mosley. Okay. But you know, I wish Ashton well. I went to watch them a few weeks ago against Nantwich, and they did well. They won, and uh, you know, I enjoyed watching the the ex Mosley lads, Gary G and Cav Coo and lads like that playing for them. Uh, Cade Coppin, and I wish them all very well. I, I I hope they make the playoffs. Yeah. Well, just one final point. I know that uh, one of the things you tweeted in last week was to take music off the show which Absolutely. we've done but yeah. you yourself are in fact a singer no. um, and I believe you've got a, a gig coming up uh, do, you, do you want us to tell us about that? Well I can do it but, um, I, we run um, an acoustic night on Mondays at the Q Inn in Staley Bridge mm -hmm. um, called Acoustic Eclectic and uh, we have a special guest each week and then wrap an open mic around it and it's always a really nice night and on Monday night our special guest is a fantastic singer-songwriter, a guy called Phil Middleton, mm -hmm. who's quite well known locally, um, but we've had all kinds of amazing talent on there, and, and I promise if anybody comes down on Monday night, they're guaranteed a really nice night, all right, and if they're there early enough, they get to, they get to uh, see me play and sing. Alright, so. well I'm not going to let him sing tonight after, <laughs> after what he's told us to do.